Indy Mogul. Alice has returned to Wonderland. Since you've been gone, the Red Queen has taken over all of Wonderland. Find up! <sighs> Let's make the world right again. Mom, we're there! James Cameron is a natural fit for the world of motion capture green screen filmmaking. But how about Tim Burton? Well, we're about to find out as Burton reveals his first foray into the medium, with 90% of Alice in Wonderland being shot on green screen. But don't worry, there's not going to be any Johnny Depp avatars. You'll still get to see your favorite actors in the flesh, albeit highly disguised flesh, as well as a slightly exaggerated Helena Bonham Carter. It's just what's behind them it will be completely digital. And to many, an invitation to enter a world literally out of Tim Burton's imagination is a very exciting opportunity. Let's just hope that invitation is not rescinded by the movie theater. Yes, Odeon theaters in Europe and several chains in the Netherlands are boycotting the film. AMC theaters here in the U.S. almost joined their ranks as well. That's because Disney is planning to release Alice in Wonderland on DVD just 12 weeks after opening it in theaters, while the industry standard is 17 weeks. And since movie theaters make the majority of their take of a movie's box office gross from the tail end of its run, that eats into their profits. Plus, if you can see Alice in Wonderland on DVD in just three short months, will some folks choose to wait it out? After the break, we'll find out as we talk to audiences who've just gone down the rabbit hole. <laughs> hey Andy Mogul, I'm Third Floor Productions and this is a 10 second trailer to my new short film called Public Service. Take your cigarette butts back. Oh, Action. Whoa! Mike, don't work here. Was uh, Green Eggs and Ham a TV show? With all the magic of Hollywood CGI at his disposal, is this the ultimate Tim Burton movie? Yes. I really liked it. I, I thought it was great. I thought it was actually great and funny. It was sort of a little bit of uh, Lord of the Rings and a little bit of Beetlejuice. As far as you can take reality, this is I was so involved in this film up until the very end. I can't wait to see his future movies to come out in CGI 3D. It's up there with Avatar. Oh, really? Yeah, well, this is the first IMAX 3D movie to come out since Avatar. Mm -hmm. How do the experiences compare? We saw Avatar in 3D, but I think this was just as good, if yeah. not better. Avatar was more like, it was just in 3D. This yeah. one's actually kind of shoving you in the face. It's 3D and trippy. Yeah. I thought the 3D effects on this film were better than Avatar's. Really? It, was made, it made more impact on this film. And James Cameron was giving Tim Burton a problem because this wasn't shot in 3D. It was uh, it was put into 3D afterwards in post production. Afterwards. And James Cameron was like, "You can't do that." Apparently, you can. Who is your favorite character in the movie? I like the mouse. Yeah, the like, mouse. Yeah, yeah. Cute. Uh -huh. I'm pretty cool with the Cheshire Cat. The Mad Hatter. The Mad Hatter. The Mad Hatter has always been my favorite character. Um, besides the fact that it was Johnny Depp. You know, Johnny is good. And don't get me wrong, he's great, but he kind of gets recycled. I thought it was going to not like the Mad Hatter because mm -hmm. Johnny Depp doesn't seem to change his character much anymore in his roles, but I really enjoyed him as the Mad Hatter. I'm not a big Johnny Depp fan, but I thought he was just so different from anything I've ever seen him do. It's different from uh, Captain Jack or Edward Scissorhands. He's just like, he's actually crazy in this one. Alice, was she overshadowed in her own story? I don't think so. I think she was the hero, and I think she really came through. Alice didn't seem real to me as a character, <laughs> so other than that, I'm, I, the, the entire movie was great. It was brillic, and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wave. All mimsy were the burrow groves, and the mumrats have grave. It's a very inspiring film. That you, was the Jabberwocky gun. Thank you. <laughs> My, sorry, English teacher. I'm sorry. What do you give the movie on a one to ten? Um, a nine. Nine and a half. I'd give it a ten. Ten? Ten. Nine. Ten? Eleven? Yeah. Ten, eleven. Nine. Okay. Nine. Yeah, I would say about an eight or so. A nine and a half. I would chortle for joy. <laughs> it's not even numberable. Looks like James Cameron isn't the only one who can make an IMAX 3D movie. His audiences give Alice in Wonderland a nine. And don't forget that Alice in Wonderland is the focus of this week's One Sentence Review Challenge. If you've seen the movie, leave your 1 to 10 rating below, as well as your One Sentence Review. Whoever writes the best one gets a free pair of AMC movie tickets, and I'll announce the winner this Sunday on my Facebook page. And also this Sunday, the Oscars. Be sure to go here, IndieMogul.com slash Oscars, for all of our Oscar content. I'm Grace Randolph, and you've just gone beyond the trailer. <laughs>